please, before you give a warm welcome, enjoy this incredible piece of footage. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Ken Carter. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. Sir, I just want to say thank you. You saved my life. Thank you, sir. All of you. Sitting next to Mr. Jackson, and you're not get in shape for the guy. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Tell me, what clicked in you that you did it? Was this premeditated? Cut all that. Cut, Cut all that. Understand? Cut all that. Here we go. See, I know what some of you guys are thinking. I do not have ESP, but I do have ESPN. And a lot of you guys are thinking, Samuel Jackson is taller than Coach Carter. <laughs> yes, Samuel Jackson is taller, but I can outrun him. <laughs> See, my presentation today is going to be like a lady's dress. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, it's going to be long enough to cover all the basics, but it's going to be short enough to keep your interest. <laughs> the great thing about you being here because you're in the house of winners. This is a winning organization. This festival is about winning. Life is beautiful. Have you ever seen a U-Haul follow a hearse to the grave? Never. You can't take it with you. You got to live now. You got to get it done now. See. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And see, there's a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is just an economic condition. But being poor is a disabling frame of mind and a depressed condition of one spirit. You must vow never to let your family, your church, your school, or your community ever be poor. Because life is beautiful. And see, I don't know where I've caught you. Some of it could be in wintertime in your life. It could be spring in others. I don't know where I've caught you, but one thing I do know, you're in search of something. And I know if you search long enough, you will find it. Because guess what? We're all winners here. And winners do one thing, they win. They don't make excuses. I can't stand people who make excuses. Oh! Can't stand them. Because if you want your future to get canceled, be a chronic complainer. No one wants to be around you. Because see, you don't get paid by the hour, you get paid by the value you bring to the hour. Now how much value are you bringing? My first coaching job 
was at Richmond High School, the most dangerous high school in the city of California. But this is the thing, that's my cousin over there, thank you. <laughs> but the greatest thing is, everybody else looked at it as a problem. I didn't look at it as a problem. I looked at it as an opportunity to do better. And yes, I do have seven sisters. I have a shirt that says, I survived seven sisters. <laughs> but this is the thing. Everybody looked at Richmond High School, oh, it's a ghetto school. They're in last place. They, they have won in four games in the last 10 years. I just looked at it as an opportunity. But when I looked at the opportunity, it was not with the boys team that they made the movie about. My first coaching assignment was with the girls. You understood? But see, I was already equipped for that job. Because <laughs> I have seven sisters. So I understood. And yes, when I buy all my sisters cologne, like right now, I'm wearing chance. When I buy the bottle, they only use half of it, I use the rest of the half. See, you gotta be able to be mobile in this thing called life. And you gotta be able to win. My first coaching assignment, I was coaching the girls. We never ever practiced, ever, for the first month. I just let the girls sit in a circle and talk about their day. See, I understood it was more important for the girls to get along with each other than to have a skill. Think about it. If the ladies in your organization do not get along, you have major problems. <laughs> I understood this because I have seven sisters, all of them the same size. My mother and dad leaves to go to work. They would fight for 30 minutes. This is my blouse. This is my shirt. Give me my pants. They would fight for 30 minutes, get dressed in five, and we would all catch the bus to school. So I just let the girls sit in a circle and talk about their day. One day before our first game. Now, let me tell you the expectations of coaching at Richmond High School, the girls team. They had won four games in the last 10 years. So I'm just thinking, if I win two games, I'm extremely successful. But what is success? <laughs> success is just a refined study of the obvious. A refined study is they were losers. I changed that instantly. I sat there with this great strategy with the girls. One day before our first game, I said, young ladies, would you learn, would like to learn how to actually do a layup? And they go, yeah, coach, let's try it. And I implemented this great thing. In four passes, no matter where you are, you shoot the ball. Period. No matter where you are, you shoot the ball. And they would go, one, Two, three, four, oh my God, I have the ball. I said, shoot! Young lady named Stephanie threw the ball from almost half court. The ball went in the goal. I was the greatest coach ever. <laughs> now, I always ask guys this. How many games do you think we won the first, our first 15 games? How many games do you think we won, young man? Four. Young man, how many games do you think we won? Two. How many games do you think we won? Three. See, that's how males think. Dude, I have a movie. <laughs> the last time I checked, they don't make movies about losers. <laughs> they make movies about winners. Of course, we won our first 15 basketball games. We all the way in the state finals in the championship game. And I'm gonna tell you how winter just creeps up in your life. Winter, all that success, winter creeps up into our lives. Guess what happens? My point guard would not pass the ball to my leading scorer. I said, young lady, what's wrong? She said, coach, I can't stand her. I said, what seems to be the problem? She wore her red dress and she knew I was gonna wear mine. Most males don't understand that. I do. So I put them back out on the floor. I said, they're going to play with each other. She still wouldn't pass her the ball. So I called my final timeout. And as the young ladies were walking towards me, I yelled, I said, pass the ball. Would you believe my entire team started crying on the sideline? <laughs> and then I asked them, I said, why are you guys crying? They went, well, coach, you didn't have to yell at her. <laughs> but see, having knowledge. See, most people have told you knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. The execution of good knowledge is power.
See, and everybody always say you have to be in the right place at the right time to be successful. No, you have to be the right person in the right place at the right time to be successful. I was the right person. Here we go. I said, young ladies, gather around. I said, after this game, when we win, I'm going to take everybody shopping. We won that game by 10 points. <laughs> See, you got to know what moves people. You cannot be on the break all the time. You got to be on the gas. See, it takes a little gas, a little break, a little gas, a little break, and hopefully somebody in the car have their hands on the starting wheel. <laughs> See, that's your job. You don't get paid by the hour, you get paid by the value you bring to the hour. And you must always do more than what you're paid for as an investment in your future. See, kids are one third of our population, but they're 100% of our future. And the great thing about this, people always say, Coach, how come you spend so much time with kids and give them so much time? And, Inspiration. I'm not a, motivator, a motivation speaker. I can't even say the word. I am not a motivational speaker because when you motivate people, you push them from the back. When you inspire people, they lead from the front. So this is the thing. You got to write your goals down. Believe it or not, I wrote down at six years old that they was going to make a movie about me and gave it to my mom. Little town called Macomb, Mississippi. That's M, big C, little C, O-M-B. The most racist town in America. We was broke. We was never poor. My family was just broke. No matter how much my mom and dad worked, we never, ever had enough. Just enough. Just enough. And I came home one day, and my mom was crying because she didn't have enough gas to finish cooking the meal. And my first grade teacher gave me the ability to write. And this is what I wrote to my mama at six years old. Mama, one day they're going to make a movie about me. And I'm going to buy you a big house and pay off all of your bills. And mama, you will never, ever have to cry again. Love, Kenny Ray. I was Kenny Ray before I was Coach Carter. And I know you're looking at me right now saying, young man, did you buy your mama a big house? Yes, I did. Did you pay off all of her bills? No. My mama is an expensive girl. <laughs> See, this thing called life, you got to live it because you cannot get out alive. This thing called coaching, I take it extremely serious. And you do not want a job in life. A J-O-B means just over broke. Period. That's what a J-O-B is. Period. A jumping out of bed. You take, take your choice. And you do not want a job in life. You want a career. There is a difference. Coaching is my career. I take coaching so serious, even my mom calls me coach. And they asked me, do you really give kids 5,000 push-ups? Yes. It is not a punishment. It is a discipline. A punishment will last you one day, one week, one month. A discipline, people, will last you a lifetime. So you got to get to doing what you need to do. You got to write it down. Scientifically, if you write things down, they're 10 times more likely to come true. So before my day ends, I write down my next day, the next day. If you want to be successful, that's all you have to do is write your day down the night before so nobody won't steal your time. There's more money than anything on this planet. Now, if you don't have your share, and we're at the richest time at this moment on this spinning planet, if you don't have your share, stop complaining and get to work because it's only your fault. You're going to be blaming other people, but think about it. 80% of the people don't care about your problem. And the other 20% is glad it's you and not them. <laughs> so stop nagging and complaining. By the show of hands, how many of you have friends and family who's extremely talented, who do absolutely nothing with their time? Raise your hand. Now, if you did not raise your hand, you're probably that person. <laughs> So to the right of you and to the left of you, shake the person's hand and say, I validate your ability to be successful. Do it right now. <laughs> Great job. I'm a basketball coach, and I'm going to tell you one more basketball story. Man, this is the greatest thing. When you see the movie, there's a gentleman in the movie called Worm. And I always have this term, put me in the game. Coach, say it. 
Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Why am I always saying, Coach, put me in the game? I play every kid every game. Now, it's up to him how long he plays, but I'm going to play every kid every game. If you're on the team, I think you should play. So now, I entered Worm. Worm entered the game. And let me give you his statistics in one minute and 30 seconds. Worm had taken three shots, missed all three of them. He had turned the ball over twice and committed four fouls. <laughs> all in a minute and 30 seconds. I couldn't wait to get him out of the game. And Worm ran by me, Coach, you going to put me back in? I said, boy, get away from me. Get to the end of the bench. Now I'm coaching the boys. And this guy who plays in the NBA now who's just killing us. Oh, he was just killing us. I said, just hold on to that monster, Junior. Just hold on to him. And I'm a pacer, so I'm walking up and down the court. And my All-American foul out of the game. The referee comes over and says, Coach, you only have 20 seconds. I'm going to have to call a technical on you if you don't get a substitute in the game. You know it's not one of my players wanted to go in the game. Every time I look at one of them, they put their head down. They were scared to death. And Worm, out of all people, when I turned around, guess who I bumped into? I bumped into Worm. And Worm said, Coach, put me in the game. Come here, young man, quickly. Quickly, you didn't know you were going to be part of this show. Come here, quickly. Hustle! You don't have a heart condition or nothing like that, do you? I grabbed Worm like this. Now, Worm had a little deeper tan, but he'll work, <laughs> all right? I grabbed Worm and I said, Worm, the school needs you. The team needs you. The community needs you. <laughs> Worm looked at me and said, Coach, the TV camera's on us? I said, boy, I said, get out there and get ferocious. I pushed him out there. I said, get out there and get ferocious. Worm was like, I said, Worm, get out there and get ferocious, son. He was, I said, Worm, get out there and get ferocious. And he looked at me and said, Coach, is ferocious on our team? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and said, Coach, is ferocious on our team? And what is his number? I should have known I'd had an academic problem then, right? Worm entered the game, scored eight points that quarter, held that NBA player to zero points, and we won another championship. I realized one thing that night, that successful people would go from one failure to the next enthusiastically, because the only one who believed in Worm that night was Worm, because I truly didn't. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm going to give everybody in here the Coach Carter experience. I hope all the insurance is paid up. Everybody stand up right now. Stand up right now. Everybody put both of your hands over your head. Oh, that is so cool. What is a photographer? Get a pictures of that. Good job. Wow, look at that. That is so cool. Now take your right hand and put over your heart. Your right hand, young man. <laughs> all right, now I want you to turn 360 degrees, please. Now you can put down your hands. Now when anybody asks you, how was Coach Carter presentation here? At Life is Beautiful? This is what I want you to tell him. He made me rise to my feet, raise both of my hands. He touched my heart and he turned me around. God! Ah! Yes! 